guys here we go another phase we got our top painted green we got our blue we went ahead and blacked this out i got two coats of black regular black there it's not going to stay shiny um just let you know when i do black i do two coats of regular black and three coats of flat black so we're almost there. We're, we're getting down to it. Like the more tedious. Um, well, right now, I am going to start laying stencils. Today will be all about this phase right now. be about stencil work because um, of the coverage that it, cost, uh, it takes. And then next after that would be um, turning this tongue in, 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 into that. And then we'll be able to lay the stencil there. But um, I'm going to go ahead. And show you my technique that I use. I like to um a lot of times I get stencils like this. This is a sheet that I get. I got it from my guy, um, Quentin Webster. Shouts out to him. But um you can find him on Instagram at Quentin um Webster. So, anyways, what I like to do is uh, or what I found is like this whole sheet, I I would go through such a waste just just trying to cut for this little section because that's all we're doing and I, I really don't want to take any blades to this because I'm in fear of cutting the mesh. So what I did was I found something that was see-through clear, but yet um, stable enough and firm enough for me to use kind of like a stencil. So what I did was, um, just to let you know on how I kind of like improvise, I have these... These letters here I was going to use for something, as you can see, I did them, they're all shoes matter. But, um, anyways, it comes with a, with a paper inside, um, a plastic, kind of flimsy, but, like I said, um, stable enough. So, I had this. You're going to say, like, okay, like, what the, f what the freak is this? So, what I did was, is, um, I cut out a section around the size of the shoe of, of, of basically like from here to here and the highest point to the highest point I cut a piece out of this paper I put it up to my shoe and as you can see it's exactly well not exactly because I I made it a little bit bigger so that way you know the stencil where I can have more control over it this way when I go to use my stencil when I when I when I come down here and, and I and I have oops, excuse me. When I get my stencils down here, I can position on where I want a particular. Like right now, we're working with with bait. So, um, if I want to face towards the top, if I want to face towards um the the by the midsole because this is the midsole area. Um, I can just basically position this where I want to. I'm going to trace it out and then I'll just cut it. So um, I perfectly like to go by the edge. So we're going to go by the edge over here. And I already picked out a spot. I got a face right there that um, I'm digging. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, stick with this spot. I'm going to grab, um, grab a marker because I'm not too worried about the rest of it. So just just basically press down and you don't have to be super perfect. You don't have to be like precise because this is getting cut down anyways. But what you just you want to do the best you can and that's all you can do. I tend to kind of use my three fingers or I should say three fingers and a thumb. Um, I would put as you could just see here. I don't got to tell you. And I would go ahead and just trace this out and of course I used the wrong side so I'm gonna have to go over it again Don't worry about, like I say, getting it precise um, or, or that you're going to ruin the other stencils because you can always see it. And like I said, you always want to be like a little bit over to compensate so you've got room to like 
move it around, twist it up, twist it down. Maybe there's a line that's just not right. So, yeah, just, just take your time. I'm not being precise, but I'm being pretty close. I guess that's how you can put it. Okay, so there we go. We got pretty much an idea of what we're doing there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And I'll get right back to you. Peace. <clears throat> Alright guys, so look at it. I kind of cut out. Some things come off the ends, but um, I don't think I'm going to need that. So I'm going to go ahead. I got my transfer paper. Basically just going to eye it out. I kind of like put it on the crossways and... So, once I leave it there, beautiful thing about a glass table, guys, is that you can take knives to it, you can put paint on it, it won't stain, and it scrapes right off with a razor. So now that I got, I just take my X-Acto knife and trace it. Again, this is not going to affect the shoe this is just basically helping me transfer the stencils on to the shoe and religiously you're not supposed to put stencil over painted areas but i've talked with the manufacturer who um who i used to get stencils from before i started doing my own um told me that i can if i can at least just leave it on there long enough where i can get um, at least some definition. So you can, but it's recommended I just give it like two coats, just so that way I see the lines around the edges, and then that way I can just basically do it myself. Because if you leave it under too long, you run the risk of when you pull the stencil off that you're going to pull the paint off with it. So fortunately, I've been um, lucky enough to not have that happen. Not saying that it won't. It could happen in this video. Because um, like I said, what you see is what you get. Um, so basically, let me move my stencils out the way. So basically, what you want to do is, now that we know we got it on for this side, now that we got it for this side, I am going to go ahead and there is a paper back in here. Underneath the vinyl. So once I separate that, I need to make sure this is what's going to hold the, because on the other side, it's adhesive. These stencils, some are non-adhesive and some are adhesive. It's very important that some will stick. So you just have to be tedious with it and make it work. Like this one's just like really messing with me here, but patience is the key. Yeah, so it just baby it. Be sure to get everything with it. Use the dull side of an exacto knife or something pointy, just so that way that you can lay it down and just peel off. Don't yank up. You don't want to yank up. Yank like off to the side, like and keep it as close as possible, so that way you can force that edge to bend. See, I got one that wants to come up right here. Okay, see, I laid it back down. Right here's the tricky part. So what I did, what I learned before, is if you're careful enough, why don't you get and cut this piece off? Because it's going to make it a lot more awkward to take it off than it is. So now that we got that out the way, continue it, walk it. Walk the edge. Cause you want to start off from the edge. You wouldn't want, cause you're gonna end up pulling stuff off. So you need to go ahead and there we go. You just 
again try to keep it as close as possible try not to touch as much stencil as as you can you know the less you touch it the better off you are because if you touch it you're taking the adhesiveness away from the stencil so you'll get it over time the more you work with it i don't work with a lot of stencils but um whenever i want a definite line and this is actually my first time ever um using um bait stencils um like i said i i did it because i wanted to i make the mesh look like the meth that they cooked in breaking bad that's why i chose to do them um the mesh in blue i haven't dyed this mesh yet but i will and you'll see it later on in this video um how i went about doing it but i wanted to make it seem like it was crackling through the shoe so i thought of the bait or the bap and yeah now i'm trying it if you've ever tried it i would like to see tag me in one of your pictures Okay, now that we got it off, we're gonna go ahead and lay it where we cut it out. And don't worry about it not fitting all the way down to the bottom. That's where you improvise and you use your artistic skills and fill it in. We just wanted to cover more of the bases, so. I know there was supposed to be something here. So when I go to to paint, so now you just, now that we got it, I like where I'm laying it at. We don't, we don't not too worried about that end. I can always improvise and get that end. So you just wanna like press around, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to dig into it because like I said, you have paint on there. So you don't want it, you want it to stick, but you don't want it to really, really Guys, we got our stencils put on. Before painting, I did, I just I had to stop myself. But it's always important. Um, I found this. It's for for doing yarn work. Like if old women want to make sweaters or scarves, whatever they do. Um, but I use it. I found I can use it, and I use it for a couple of things. I use it for lifting up the edges, or um, in this case. Just flattening the stencils, just getting them down right before I, pa I paint them. So I already did that. I don't want to take too much time doing that. So whenever I do like um, stencil work, I always like to use like a small brush. I, there's no need. I want a lot of control. So what what we're doing here is like we're just getting an outline of it. So whenever doing a stencil work, always try to pull from on top of the stencil down, like onto the shoe. If you go this way. Like from the shoe onto the to the stencil, you can cause bleeding underneath. Even though the stencils are good that you get, you still run the risk of bleeding. So anything you can help from that happening, 
you can go ahead that's why i like to use a detail brush because like on instances like this around these eyes um i can just go right on and and i'm not really worried about getting the definite color because i'm comfortable enough where if i just get the outline i can go over it freehand um so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and and do this first one for you and then i'll speed it up and do a time lapse and next time you see it um practically the whole shoe will be done um well at least the other side will so i'm going with three colors here um what i like to do on stencil work is i i like to take the stencil over the edge and i'll go into that when i'll show you how what i mean by that as a matter of fact i could just show you right now real quick before we go into some time lapse so what i mean by over the edge is it separates you with the detail work i guess you can say um it's like this edge here i see that this is green so I want to carry the green over to the edge. Only where the green is going to be at though. So I would hit this edge all green. Except for this part. Because this part is going to be a different color. And except for that part. So I'll go more in depth in it when I get all the um, stencil work done. But for right now, let's just focus on getting um good coverage and the hardest part i would say is the blotchiness that's where you go and i see this right here this is kind of i don't know if you can see it it's, it's kind of dark but but we're gonna work that out so you're not like i said you're not gonna cover it on the first coat we're just basically plus you don't want the stencils on too long so it's like a, a race against the clock but yet you still have to be good and clean about it um I know it seems a little tedious doing it with this brush, but like I said, um, I've learned the hard way and I used a bigger brush and I just got paint like everywhere. I got paint crossing over into other areas that I didn't want. I was touching areas of the shoe that I didn't want touched after I was done coating it. Like this midsole, I'm done with the midsole. I don't need to hit the midsole no more. So I want as much control as I can on that midsole or at least around it. So especially with the edges here, like, yeah, it's just a choice of preference. You could do what you want and learn, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't have to take my word for it, but like I said, I'm, I'm here to help and I, I wouldn't steer anybody wrong. I even... I don't even care if some people's work is better than mine. If they need help, I will help them. I'm not a shady dude. Like, I feel honored to be able to, that someone is asking me for help. Like, that is so cool. Like, I never thought that my skills, and this is just me speaking humbly, like, I never thought that my skills would be wanted or be asked for. So, for anyone to ask me a question and how to do it, what type of product I use, or what do I think of a color scheme, I would definitely help you. Um, you just hit me up at All Shoes Matter and on Instagram. And um, yeah, that's how things are done there. A lot of my work is posted on there. A lot of my work, my restore work has been put on there. So I'm pretty much done with that. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the faster version. And I'll hit you guys up in a little bit.